Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, we do a panorama of New York, New York. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris. And I make two tutorials per week. If you want to get them in your YouTube notification, just click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want to get the three world files I'm going to offer you in this episode and all the past world files from all over the world, all you have to do is click here to subscribe to my newsletter and you'll get special sales and access to all the world files. Also, at the end of this episode, there is a special trailer of my new course, the Lone Exposure Photography Course. It's an awesome course. I spend a lot of time and energy trying to get the right photo. Check it out. I think you'll like it. All right, so now let's go to New York and let me show you how I took this panorama of New York. It's actually a pretty fun story. All right, mesdames and messieurs, so I just want to tell you a funny story of how I took a photo and, and a few tricks on panoramas and a few tricks on, on making dramatic black and white. Uh, I was flying back from Florida to Paris and I had a, a full day in New York. I mean, like, not really a full day, but, you know, landing somewhere uh, like at noon and my next flight was at nine. So I said, I'm not going to stay in the airport for a whole day. And I always dreamed to go to B&H, which I did. So I took a cab, went to B&H. And uh, I spent a whole a lot of time being made. It's an amazing store. And as I was walking out, I was walking the street of New York. Uh, to some, I was just trying to make like sort of panoramas. I'm always impressed by the size of the buildings. You feel so small in New York. And, you know, trying things. And when, then when I see that the Empire State Building is pretty close to B&H, you know. So, but I had to come back to my flight. So I had very little time. I literally had just one hour. So I walked up to the Empire State Building and asked the girl, could, could I go up there and take some photo in one hour? She says, yeah, if you take the fast, you know, they have like a sort of a fast uh, lane so you don't have to wait like the other guys if you pay extra money. So I did that and it took me so long to get up there. I was really scared I was going to miss my flight. So I arrived at the top of the Empire State Building and uh, for efficiency reason, what I did is I, I was trying to get a setting of my camera so that it would take really sharp photos. So one two hundred of a second at f.8 i knew i would have a big depth of field iso 100 and one two hundred of a second i knew i could you know like throw my camera in the air and still uh, still get a sharp photo because it's a pretty fast speed so i ran around literally in two minutes around the empire state building that's the view you get from the different you know uh it's like a little square that's the top of it and then you know i didn't even look the photos i was taking i was just you know <laughs> i just rushed there and then, um, then when I went home, I said, you know, okay, what can I do with this? And uh, I'll show you something that I, that I did with it, which I find it's pretty cool. Uh, let me show you this. Yeah, something like that. So, you know, it's like there was a pretty boring sky. The only place that was a bit interesting was where the sun was, which is that side of, uh, you know, where you can see here, because it's, uh, you can see the Statue of Liberty, you know. Uh, the, you know so facing to the Statue of Liberty, uh, the sun was coming here. And I had this idea of why not make a black and white, pan, uh, you know, panorama, you know, with this three shot, first shot, second shot and third shot. So uh, let's do this and let me show you how I did it. So first, what I did is I open up the shadows and bring down the highlights, the usual stuff, you know, then I did my, you know, uh, whites, uh, trying to find a white point, but not too much. And then trying to find a black point, but not too much, just a little bit like this. I was trying to get something, even that is a bit too much. Uh, then I would do two things. I would take out the saturation. And you see here, there's a little spot. So I would, of course, take that. I had a huge spot on my sensor, which I saw afterwards and cleaned it since then. Actually, there's more than, more than a few spots. So, I mean, this was shot with a Sony a7R, 36 million files. So you can really zoom in on New York. And I'm actually giving you these files for free. So you can try this at home. Now, one thing that's really important, and that's, I think is the biggest secret about black and white, is that you have to start off with an uncontrasted photo. So now this already is too much contrasty. So what I do is I'm gonna take my contrast and I'm gonna go minus. I'm trying to get a washed out look. Okay, now I have a lot of vignetting effect going on. So don't forget to unabout the profile situation, which is gonna take care of that. Remove chromatic aberration. It's not really needed on black and white. And uh, let's do some auto so that it's a bit more straight. Okay, so that's kind of cool. I'm gonna add some clarity because clarity is gonna give me more details. And I'm certainly, certainly gonna do some. I mean, it's a bit, 
it was very foggy, so you know there's pollution, so it's not it's it's not super sharp. The 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 first is it's not super sharp because I think I moved too much. But you'll see the end result is kind of cool. I mean it is kind of sharp a little bit. I actually think I have a sharper one. Let me just check. I think I have a sharper one because the first photo I took three times. So that's one thing that I do also. If you want to compare the sharpness, yeah, this one is a lot sharper actually. So what I can do is I just, whatever I did, that was a mistake. I took the wrong photo. I can just take whatever I did here. I can sync it, you know, so you select bows. And now what I, did, what I did is on the second one, this one is kind of sharp. So this one is a bit sharper. Yeah, it's a lot sharper. I don't know. I think I moved too much on this one. So, okay. So we have a minus contrast, but we have a plus clarity. Saturation is being off. And um, yeah, oh, the last thing I want to do on this one, look, your Statue of Liberty, that's amazing, about 36 million pixels. You can really zoom in on this, you know? And I want to do something about the sharpening. I'm going to put the sharpening at 100, and then I'm going to take a bit of noise out, like maybe 10, and then back down the sharpening around 90. And then of course, so sharpening is going to bring back noise and it's going to make everything sharp. I mean, if you don't have too much of a shaky photo to start with, which is fine. Like, look the sharpness that I have. It's pretty cool. And now I'm going to do my masking. So I'm going to press the hold key and anything which is black, it's creating a mask. It's not going to get sharpened. I, I don't want the sky to be sharpened. I just want the, the, the buildings to be sharpened. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Happy with what I got. So I'm going to press Command D uh, to just, I just want to select this one this one and this one. And so you have to be on the photo yet that you just corrected. So I'm gonna click on sync and I'm gonna synchronize. And so it's gonna turn black and white, uh, this photo, uh, this photo, and this photo. Right now they are completely washed out. So I'm gonna right click, edit, and um, open as, uh, sorry, merge to panorama in Photoshop. Okay, merge to panorama in Photoshop is gonna create just one big photo with all three. So here we are. So I just use the auto function and blend image together, that's it. And that's all I do. And since Photoshop CS5 and CC and CS6 and CC, photo merge has got lots better and the vignetting. Remember I took the vignetting out of the photo? That was very important because if you don't take the vignetting out and you do that, I remember that you do that by uh, enabling the profile correction. If you don't do that, you're liable to get black lines on your panorama. It's going to look kind of fake. Now, you have to realize that right now I'm merging three Sony A7R files. Each file is 36 million pixel. So the final panorama of New York that I'm going to get is going to be so big that I could probably make a print that's like, I don't know, 20 feet long or something like that and still get like an amazing details. So please do not use, I'm going to give you for free, but do not use this photo for commercial reasons. You know, you can try them at home, but do not sell it to anybody or anything like that. Uh, it's just for your own train. So, or if you want to buy them for me, just let me know. But anyways, uh, I still want you guys to have the raw file so you can see the quality of, uh, of them and, you know, play around with it. Now, it's taking a lot of time because it's a lot of data to process, a lot, a lot of data. And actually, for the sake of the tutorial, what I'm gonna do is that once it's merged, instead of, uh, I'll show this to you, I will make the file size smaller just so that the tutorial would go faster. But in real life, I wouldn't do that because I, I always want to get the best quality of my printing. And this could make an amazing photo when it's finished. So I'm gonna put on pause until it's merged. So now it's merged and uh, you can see here, like there's the three photos and it did a mask, but this was shot like 35 millimeter, but you see it's kind of like, I'm gonna press Z and Alt to unzoom. You can see it's kind of like weird. It's it's weird looking. So what I'm gonna do is two things. Uh, I mean, I could make a panel out of, out of that, but it's got all kind of distortion. So I'm gonna press Command E to flatten everything into one layer. And then I'm gonna duplicate the layer and I'm gonna to go to image and that's the step you don't have to do if you have time. Image size, look at the size, 17,000 pixels. Uh, for, for the tutorial sake, I'm going to put it down to 5,000. And I'm not going to do a build preview. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to make the whole thing much smaller because uh, otherwise the, the tutorial is going to go on forever. So I'm going to put on pause until the image size went down to 5,000. So now it's down to 5,000, but it looks small. But if you click here on 100%, it's still very big. It's still a very big photo, but it was crazy. It was 17,000 and it would be very slow for the next move I wanted to show you. 
You see, the problem is that the distortion is kind of weird. Now I'll show you a trick, which I love, is all you have to do, so remember I duplicated the layer, is go to Filter, Adaptive Wide Angle, and with the metadata that's inside, look what it does. I did nothing, I just opened the filter and click on OK. And what it does, it corrects already a lot of the problems of the photo. It's not perfect, but boy, look at this. It's a lot better than before. So I'm gonna turn this one off, and now I can just take my crop tool here, and I can just crop the photo. Now, of course, you know, in, in the real world, I would have kept the 17,000 because with the wide angle, I'm, I'm losing pixels again. So if I would have started off with a 17,000 pixel photo, of course, I wouldn't you know, have gotten that. I don't want it to be so much panorama, so something like that is fine, you know. I want this to be like a here kind of, uh, yeah, rule of third, maybe a little bit like this, but okay, that's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. Uh, yeah. All right, so now I'm gonna press enter. So now I have, uh, okay, I can just zoom in so you, you can see, oops, sorry. A crop, yeah, crop the image. Um, a Z for zoom and fill fit screen. It's still pretty big. It's still, it's still a big photo. You know, at the end, it's still like a 4,000 or something. Yeah, 3,500, but that's just for the tutorial. So now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna file, I'm gonna go to close, I'm gonna save it. So it's gonna import back into Lightroom. So I'm going back into Lightroom and it's putting, it's already in Lightroom, it went real fast. So now we can start doing the All retouching. we did is used Photoshop to correct the wide angles troubles. Okay, so now, um, what you see the sun is coming on the right, so what I wanna do is give an illusion that there is a lot more fog there. I wanna make a big contrast there and a small contrast there. So for this, I'm gonna, and you know, remember that when we, uh, we did the photos, what we did is we, we started off with a very uncontrasted photo. So I'm gonna take a brush and I'm gonna make a, a, a plus exposure and I'm gonna make this sort of, uh, I'm gonna add exposure there to, to mimic if there would be like fog on this part of the island. And uh, probably just do a minus clarity. I want this to be a bit foggy, okay? Something like that. And here on this side, I'm gonna create a new brush. I'm gonna go the opposite. On this one, I'm gonna minus the exposure and I'm gonna boost a bit of clarity and I'm gonna make this part of the island a bit stronger. So what I'm trying to do is a contrast between, you know, that part and the left part, you know. All I'm trying to do is create interest. That's really all I'm trying to do. So this is very contrasty. This is not so much contrasty. Uh, so I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna use uh, the graded filter and uh, make a little gradient here. That's, that just goes with that island, make even darker something like this, and even more clarity. I want really like what's in the foreground to be like really, that's a bit much, that's a bit much. And so the whole idea is that the fact that we started off with a very, very, um, you know, uh, decontrasted photo, now we can really play around. You know what, I think I'm gonna add some more fog. So I'm a new brush, I'm gonna plus exposure, minus clarity, and I wanna add even more fog here to this part, just to create a, you know, a greater impact, okay? And I think I'm mad, uh, yeah. All right, next, to make it slightly more interesting, I'm gonna click on the red roll filter and I'm gonna uh, create a big red roll filter here, okay, where I'm gonna boost the exposure. Now by default, what it does is that it boosts the exposure everywhere except uh, in a circle, so I don't want that. I'm gonna invert the mask and I'm gonna feather it. And all I'm trying to do is create a sun, which I'm gonna put here. And just to add, you know, check it out, before the sun, after the sun, okay, I can make it stronger. I just wanna, because the sun was really there, I just wanna add a bit more sun. Okay, that's kind of cool. And now I wanna make a new circle and this time, I'm gonna again, again invert mask and feather it. I just wanna add a little bit of light and a little bit of clarity even more just to make the city not led the exact same way everywhere. You know, it's like looking with a, with a lamp here. 
So right click, duplicate. Maybe I'm gonna put another one here, duplicate. You know, the whole idea is that uh, when something is led completely evenly, it looks totally boring. The fact of making it a bit different. Okay, now that's way too strong. I'm just realizing it's, it's way too strong. So you can just select the circles and make it a bit less strong, a bit less obvious. Okay, it's just way too obvious. But you get the idea. What I'm trying to do is complexify the light. I'm just trying to complexify a little bit the light just to make it a bit subtle, like if the sun was there. So now we've got a very contrasty island with a very uncontrasty island. And um, and voila, that's about that's about what I want to do. Now, on the sky, I mean, the sky is boring. I didn't want to do really anything on that. To finish this off, I want to add a bit more contrast to this photo. So now I can just add the contrast even more. I just can add contrast until I really want to get a punchy photo where like this is really out of foggy and this is not foggy. Something like that is uh, is pretty cool. So yeah, uh, that's that's the idea. And uh, actually th this photo uh, was, you know, did pretty well on 500px and as a social, you know, stuff. So I was really happy because I really literally took like a minute to this photo and I just wanted to show you this little trick on how I did this. Okay, now I want to present to you my new uh, loan exposure course. I took a lot of work. I put a lot of work in that course. Uh, I hope you're gonna like it and learn some great stuff about it. So here's a little presentation of my loan exposure photographic course. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, as you can see. And today I'm here to talk to you about one of my most exciting course, the Photography Loan Exposure course. Loan exposure is an amazing technique where you can get silky water, stretchy skies, you can get surreal photography, you can see some of the final results you're going to learn. In all, there is eight different projects, most of them being shot in Paris, and I will show you live how I shot the photos, you know, what time of the day, how I put the filters on, the settings of the camera. I tell you everything. I give you all the raw files. It's one of my coolest course I've ever done. I'm really proud of it. And I hope you're going to check it out. The Lone Exposure Photography Course by me. Mesdames et Messieurs, au revoir. All right, guys, I hope you like that trailer. I hope you're going to check out the Lone Exposure Photography Course. It's a pretty cool course. It's one of my favorite. And I will see you in the next episode. Au revoir. Wow, 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 wow.